So, um, for those who don't know me, I'm Christoph Jensch. I'm working, well, actually I'm a theoretical physicist, that's my background, but I'm working for the C++ team, the Ethereum, and working on the tests. So all the clients use my tests, basically, and yeah, that's what I've done over the last year. But now I want you to know a little bit more about Slocket. So what is the problem we are trying to solve? So most of you have a lot of property. Think about your house, your car, your washing machine, your lawnmower, your bike, and a lot of different other things. But you use them only if, like 5% of the time. Most of the time they're just sitting around there and don't do anything. So now the problem comes, how could you when sell or share them easily? And that's basically the problem we are trying to solve. So when you try to rent them, there are a lot of problems which come up for you, such as doing the payment, the organization, so you actually need to meet someone and speak to someone. And, no, I'm a German and we don't like this, so we want to have this completely automated. Um, you need to match the user somehow, you need all the security, all of those kind of things. So it's a real problem to rent out small things which only cost like one dollar that someone can use a bike for 20 minutes or your washing machine. And so those are the problems you have, and that's the reason why you usually just don't do it. You do it maybe sometimes for the big things and use some platforms for it. But we want to show you now a solution, which is basically a lock that can directly be opened by paying it. I mean paying the lock. Now we are just not talking to paying someone else. So how does this work? So the basic process is very simple. An owner of a slock, he can set two numbers, which is a deposit and a price. And then he's basically done. He doesn't need to do anything else. Just lock his property with this lock. Now when a user comes along, he just needs to pay the deposit. After he's done this, he has access to open and close or switch it on and off as often as he wants to. He is the current user. And he can also um, set some other sub-users like family and friends because he paid for it so they can also use it. So you have a user management system included. And then let's say he, he used it for a couple of days and then he re returns it. When he returns it, after a while he gets back his deposit minus the costs. And the payment to the cost, they go directly to the owner. And this of course happens automatically on the blockchain without anyone interfering. So well, that's the visual visualization of the smart contract behind this lock. Okay? So now how does this work under the hood? Of course, it's a smart lock connected to the Ethereum blockchain. That's why I'm talking here. So what do you have? You have now um, this is big lock and what, what belongs to a lock? Um, first of all, there is a smart contract, which I just explained, which is running on the Ethereum blockchain. Everyone can read it, of course, the code is open source. And it's actually so easy to read that if you, can, if you are a developer, even not a developer, I think you can understand it and just read it. Here's just a part of it. It's, that's a part of the closing function. I need to make it nicer after the latest validity updates. Um, but yeah, you just see something here that the user gets sent the deposit minus the cost, and the owner gets sent the cost and there are some other edge cases handled here. So it's really simple to read, and you have the smart contract. So what are the things, how, how is the user interacting with the smart contract? All he can do is paying the deposit, open, reopen, close, that's all the interactions he does. On the other side, the owner, what he can do to, through the smart contract is setting a deposit, a price. He can also open and close on a restricted basis. So if, he's not, if, there's, if it's rented out, he of course cannot open and close it. But if the user has used up his deposit, then he can kick him out. Yeah, so if all those um, rules implemented in the smart contract. So, but how do we now get the connection between the smart contract and the device? So we have those little tiny embedded devices, and you see more and more coming. Like this, you know, the Raspberry Pi, many people have played with it, but there are even better ones. You see there a little Intel Edison, really, really tiny and we got a full client running on it. So when I say full client, I mean a pruned client, so it doesn't need to, that much storage. Um, so the C++ client, of course. And we also, like, some, in a couple of months, will be something from Samsung called the Arctic coming out, even tinier, and the spec are good enough that we can, run, that we can actually run a client on it. 
So, and those devices now can talk to existing smart devices. We can use Bluetooth, Z-Wave, or Zigbee. Yeah. For those of you who don't know Z-Wave or Zigbee, it's just used in smart homes. So it's a smart home technology connecting all the smart devices in your home. And there are thousands of different Z-Wave and Zigbee products out there which we can connect to. So I would not call us directly a hardware manufacturer. We're just connecting to all of those existing devices out there and just enable them with our smart contract to be controlled by the blockchain instead of just by an app. Because you know all the Internet of Things, you have those cool devices, but basically all you can do is just controlling them with an app. It's nice, but controlling by the blockchain, this gives you complete different scenarios and use cases. Okay, now let's come to other products. So what have we built until now? The first thing we come out with is a Slog home server. And I will now try a real life demo on the real life net. <laughs> So really hope that it works, that you turn off all your Wi-Fi's. <laughs> um, so this is, this is how our app looks like. We have it on Android and iOS. So what, what is the user doing? So he can now here, if he has the name of this log, which the log owner registered on the blockchain, then he gets the public key from there. Otherwise, he can type in the address or just scan in a QR code to get the public key of the smart contract. So for now, just let's use last used logs. For example, a power switch. Um, this power switch, um, the owner set here 10 deposit in buy, so it's a subunit of ether, really low, um, and a price in buy per minute, for example. What I would do now, I rent it, and this is now sending a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. So now we wait for one block to confirm it. But you could do this like a couple of days before, you don't, you don't need to do it when you're in front of it. So we need now one block to, to get this transaction confirmed. That's actually really happening on the live Ethereum network right now. So after this transaction is going through, I am the current user in the smart contract, and then I have access to open and close it. So now it's done. Thank you, Minus. Um, now if I, for example, push this open button, and this power switch there goes on. Okay, and you can think about here, it's just a kettle, but you can think about a washing machine, a dryer, which you just rent out in your shared apartment, for example. Um, let's, let, let's just say your shared apartment, five people, one bought a washing machine. So if other people want to use it, they just pay one ether or one dollar to use it. But you don't need to handle any of those things. Payments automated, the device is really connected to the blockchain. So you can yeah, you can have a lot of things behind a power outlet. Just get your imagination going in industrial processes, like paying money to use a big machine behind a power outlet. A lot of different use cases. Um, let's, I want to show you something else too, like for example the door lock. Um, if you just use a smart door lock, um, I can do the same thing. I see the deposit is now 100 ESA, the price per day is 10 ESA, so I'm now renting out this door lock. And I'm just using now my Slog home server to connect to all those devices. So people who already have a smart home yeah, can, can now say, I can control all those devices with the Slog home server. So basically you have an Ethereum client running in your home. You know, there's this uh, startup making the Bitcoin computer, and you know. <laughs> but here you have the Ethereum computer in your home controlling all of your devices. So let's narrate for the miners, so they are done now. So here you have a closed door. This is a door lock, smart door lock you can buy on the market on Amazon today. And I could now say open. And it now will send a whisper message, that's important. Um, confirm it. I hope you can all see it. You may click. <laughs> it's turning around for those in the front seats. Um, so how does this done? Because of scalability, we do not want to send an Ethereum transaction for every time you open and close something. So you only have Ethereum transaction for renting it and returning it. But in between, we just use whisper messages where they can see, is this signed by the right public key, which I can find the blockchain? If so, I execute open or close. So this goes, therefore, it's much faster. When you're in front of the door, it's just in the whisper matches. It takes about one or two seconds, and it opens. You do not need to wait one block to, for, to confirm this. So when I'm done using it, I can return it. Then I get back my deposit and minus the costs, and the owner gets his costs. It's as simple as that. So this is how. Um, the app works. Okay, also, it's just another feature which I like. You can think, I'm here in front of those devices, but you actually don't need to be. 
Right? I can turn out, you know, we have a bubble machine there at our stand. I already rented it. So I can now open it and you now will see the bubbles going, coming out there. So you can imagine, I'm standing in front of the door, I don't have money, I just call a friend, could you please open this door for me? Just send some ether to this account and then it's open. So because on the blockchain it's international, it works. So I will close it because people don't like it sometimes to get too many bubbles. Okay, this was about the products. So what else do we have? Um, this supports that way of stick via Bluetooth. We made, a, I call it all-in-one box, a slot power switch. Here we use this little tiny Intel Edison connected to relay to just switch power on and off. So you don't need a slot home server for this. Home server is good if you want to control many devices in your home or something like a door lock. But if you want to have it cheaper and all-in-one box, then you have, for example, the slot power switch. And you see those prototypes on our stand if you want to try them out. But those are it's really just the beginning. And we are currently speaking to a bike lock manufacturer. They're doing smart bike locks. So you can really rent out your bike, for example. Just lock it with a slot, and then you can leave it for three or four months, and people can just find it, unlock it, drive around, leave it there. With GPS, you can say where they should leave it. Um, so we are partnering up right now with a bike lock company. We have also a company building smart pack lo padlocks. So thinking about just a locker, they can have some stuff in there, lock it, and people pay to open it and get it. I, I could imagine, for example, a store which is open 24-7 without any stuff, and the things in there are just locked with a lock. You can go there in the middle of the night because you really need this smartphone, and then you just unlock um, the lock, pay for it, grab it, and go. So you can really automate a lot of things. So everything you can lock, you can now rent them and share it. So it's a real powerful platform to be used. And every time I talk about this to someone, they came up with different use cases, like having a parking slot, for example. Rent out your parking slot in front of your door. Other use cases, um, use your power outlet to charge cars, so that electric cars can park in front of just your home, and they're paying you for getting some energy of your house before they go along driving. So there's a lot of things you could do with this technology. So our vision, of course, is far greater than just the sharing, econ sharing economy. That's where we want to start. But you know, Internet of Things is going to be a big thing. I think the first thing when a developer sees this, he thinks about, oh, scalability. You can't do this on the Ethereum blockchain. Two and not two. The good thing is, that's a problem for IBM and Samsung. They cannot put all the devices on the blockchain, but actually we can, <laughs> because we don't have that many devices yet. So scalability is not a problem for us in the next coming two or three or four years. And I hope until then, Vitalik has solved the problem. So, <laughs> But for the next couple of years, we won't have a problem because really the Ethereum transaction only to rent it and return it. Everything else are just whisper messaging. So it's just basically a user control system on the blockchain. So we are hope that we are really the first one to bring together IoT and blockchain world on the Ethereum. And I think it's the first real prototypes you see working. Everyone's talking about this big thing, IoT and blockchain, but we just did it. Okay. I hope those things were amazing to you, but we have just another thing, <laughs> um, a really cool thing. Like, we are speaking to investors, and yes, there are some investors who want to give us some money, and we have some, how do we do the business model, how can we make money, we talked for hours about this. And we have this Ethereum blockchain now, so we thought we can do much better today. We do not need it to do it all the way, we can do it in the blockchain way. So what is the blockchain way of creating a company? Of course, it needs to be a DAO. So, and I will how today show you how this DAO, a decentralized, autonomous organization, will work. So, of course, you have the DAO and you have service provider. I hope for the first time we will be the service provider, but actually they are free to choose which any, for, for any service provider they want to. So this DAO has, of course, a smart contract in the blockchain where the constitution of the DAO stands and you can interact, interact with. So what are the tasks of the DO? First of all, they fund the development. So we will do a pre-sale, we'll do a fundraising, like a crowdfunding, and that's where we need your help. I will now explain to you what you can get from this when you participate in our pre-sale or crowdfunding. So you fund the development, you are able to vote on major decisions, and very importantly, you control the funds. So when we do this crowdfunding, the money will not go just to us, like all the money to us, and we can maybe use it good or maybe use it bad, you stay in complete control of the funds. And your goal is it to be a profitable DAO. So this is a for-profit DAO. So how does it work? Of course, you send some Ether 
to this DO and you get some SLOC tokens which are basically just membership in this DO. So you have a right to vote and, very important, you get a reward. I will explain later how this works, but you can think about this like buying shares in a company and getting actually dividends. And I don't know if there are many crypto tokens out there where you accept of volatility, just get a dividend a monthly basis or weekly basis. This is something you invest and you get dividends compared to how much we grow. I will, I will explain you how these dividends come to you. And of course, you vote on major decisions, like how to spend the money, where, we, where do you want to send, send the money to. So then you give some tasks and orders to a service provider, usually through a smart contract, and we will set up for this. So what does the service provider do? So the first service provider will be Slockage GmbH in Germany. And what we do, we produce the slogs, we do the marketing, the partnerships with all those hardware manufacturers which are producing smart locks. So this is basically our task and we need money for, for doing this. So but how are we rewarding you now? And this is the interesting thing. We can do it actually automatically on a blockchain. So you do not need to trust us to pay you out or to send some money to a DO. So how are we going to do this? So how is the reward going back um, to the DO? So there are two ways of doing this. And actually the owner of the lock has an option. Either he has a certain percent a fee for every transaction. So basically, if I rent out, let's say, this apartment, I pay 1% to the DO every time. And the DO will vote on how many percent this is. If you, the DO, make it high, then it's hard to sell the slots. But if you make it low, we maybe can sell more. So we need to talk. So, but let's say you have sorry, 0 0.5 or 1% fee. So every time something is using a slot to renting out something, you get a direct payment to the DO, and you can get your shares all the time there. So without us interfering, that means if our GmbH is gone, so GmbH is a, like, a, like a limited in Germany, and if we are gone, this still works. You still get payments. As long as there are slogs out there, slogs out there, you get your, get your money. Another thing could be because we spoke to Air, our Airbnb host, we are staying in Airbnb here, we just found out that our host is also here. So just by chance, he knows about blockchain, he wants to integrate this now, and, but he didn't like to pay 1% all the time. So but he, he said what he would like to do is have like a one-time deployment fee. So you could free yourself of this rule, like paying 1% all the time, and instead paying a certain amount of money, which the DO decides how much this will be, let's say like 10 to $100. And every time someone deploys a smart contract for his slot, this money goes directly to the DO. So we can make it happen on the blockchain that you who participated in the crowdfunding get your money back all the time as long as used. The slot is sold or they use it for sharing something. So this is the real DO. The DO stays in charge of the funds. And maybe they say, we have a good marketing campaign going on there. We send it to them. They promised us, to, if they make a good job, we send money to them again. So it's like not sending money to us with one, thing, one step, but really staying in control. We are looking, maybe we can use some nice tools. We saw here at the DEF CON some great tools for managing um, this DO. We will look into this and then make a decision which one to use. OK. So that's the complete picture. You will see now for the first time a real DO. We have, we have spoken about this last one or two years, but now it's happening. We have a real decentralized autonomous organization where you can participate, buy in shares, and get dividends back completely automated on the blockchain. So if you believe that IoT, blockchain, sharing economy has some future, you should invest and try this out and participate really in this DO. Okay, now just who are we for now? This is the team. I explained who I am. Cody Bellaba, the C++ team. This is, yeah, he, he's not by chance that he has the same name. Simon is my brother. He's a great um, developer for over 20 years now, working for large German companies um, like Deutsche Bahn and other ones. And I think some of you may remember Stefan Tool. I hope so. <laughs> yes, he has worked for, for Visa and for other big analyst companies. He has been the former, uh, the former CCO of Ethereum. So I think he made a great job for strategy and market development. I think we have a great team in place. And there are other people, sorry, that, for example, Griff, I have not mentioned them here, um, who are helping out right now with the community. So we are building this community, we are building this DO, and in a couple of months or weeks' time, you will be able to participate in this DO. So yeah, thank you very much. This was it.